Jason Cooley here with OPBC Online, a ministry of Old Pass Baptist Church in Northfield, Minnesota. And I am back again with Brother Jim. Hey, brother. How are you doing today? I'm doing great, brother. It's good to have you. You got some fancy headphones on there. You're looking <laughs> yeah. way more professional than me here with my lack of headphones. Brother Bicey told me <laughs> you ought to wear your headphones. And right. uh, I don't have my headphones plugged in. So I'm probably going to get in trouble, and hopefully I'm not too loud for everybody. I may have to back up Sounds from that good, microphone. Brother. But as long as I'm not blasting you out, maybe I won't be blasting yeah, everybody right else out. And I'll, I'll back up in case I start uh, yelling too loud. So, But anyway, uh, it's, it's good to be with you, Brother Jim. And we're going to talk about Halloween. Amen. Amen. You know, very timely, very yeah. timely. It is. And, you know, here's the thing that we're, you know, we want to talk about this. And really, the title of this show is how to handle Halloween. Right. Amen. And, you know, we want to bring you this to help you to be a blessing to you. And you might be a, let me tell you how this show applies to you. Maybe you've been saved for a really long time. If you have, amen. That's wonderful. But maybe you don't know how, to, maybe you've never taken the proper stand that you're supposed to take. Maybe you've never done that before. So we want to help you to give you some ammunition, so to speak, to give you some direction and some instruction on how to, how to handle this and maybe how to stand up for what's right. Number two, maybe you're a brand new baby Christian and you have never had to face this before, this issue. How do I handle Halloween. What do I do? What, what should I do? And how should I handle these things? And, you know, how do I go about dealing with my children? Maybe, maybe you have children that, uh, you know, that you have to introduce the truth to about Halloween. You've been partaking in Halloween and everything, and you don't know how to deal with that. Maybe you have grandchildren and you want to try to tell them the truth about Halloween. And maybe you have friends and loved ones that are participating in Halloween and, and want you to participate in Halloween, yet you understand, or maybe you don't understand, but you're going to understand today. And then it's like, okay, so what do I do with this information? Yep, amen. You know, brother Jim, let me ask you this question here in your experience with this. Uh, when you find out the truth about some things, about holidays, about other things, what usually happens with new Christians and people that find out truth? How do they usually deal with things? Well, usually they're very zealous, you know, cause the Holy Spirit's done a work in their life. And, you know, once you see the need for salvation and the Lord grants you repentance and you repent and turn to God, you know, uh, your spiritual eyes are open and you just see all these things that you never saw before um, so, and you obviously see wickedness as exceedingly sinful and exceedingly wicked. So you very appropriately want to react to that. And, um, you know, you preached a message, um, about a vengeance against sin. And that is a very normal response for a new Christian to just despise and hate sin. And even, especially something that's the embodiment of, uh, of evil evil and satanism i mean that's that is halloween so obviously you're going to be very um forthright about it and very forceful about it you know i kind of um compare it to patriotism you know um i, I was a very very patriotic person Amen. um you know, saluted the flag, you know, I would cry at these emotional ceremonies regarding our military and, um, you know, all these inspiring and moving and emotional stories, which is kind of all part of the manipulation. Um, so, you know, I, I now see uh, patriotism in respect to America as idolatry uh, you know, we're really seeing it now with the NFL and all these different things and the flag yep. and, and people protesting the pledge, you know, but, but you learn something like, Hey, you know, the pledge of allegiance was written by a communist, you know, socialist. This, yeah. Socialist, a, communist, 
a defunct Baptist pastor socialist. Exactly. And that just plays into the whole thing of how we've been manipulated for so long, you know, and that was written so long ago. And once you start to see these things, you become, you know, you're like, wow. And I think a lot of the hatred about it is like, man, I was manipulated. Like I was manipulated for a long time. So, you know, now that I'm not uh, mainstream patriotic, I'm not going to go around blasting people that are and like, Oh, you flag worshiper and, and, and all these uh, right. people in the military, all they do is murder babies and all this stuff, you know, but, but I'm going to approach them kindly, you know, and say, or it's just know. like the whole, yeah, it's like the whole cops are evil thing that yeah, all exactly. cops and you treat all yeah. cops like they're the antichrist or something. Exactly. That's not a balanced approach to anything. No. No, you know, just I've like seen, all the military, they're all baby murderers. You know? Yeah, exactly. And that's just not true. Yeah. Um, and what I've seen with that is it really, you know, I've seen people talk about they have ministries that are full of grace and truth. And I seen those ministries and then I see them attacking U.S. soldiers as if they're, yeah. you know, the Antichrist, all exactly. of them. Yeah. Now believe is believe yeah, me. There's no exceptions to the rule. They're all just inherently evil, wicked, and devil possessed. And, and like all cops are just completely. You yeah. know what? I've had yeah. cops save my rear end before out there yeah. when yeah. I was preaching in the streets, and the sod mobs come after you, the yeah. crazy people come after you. I've had cops literally defend me, defend our men, defend our general. right to stand yeah. up. And I have videos out there thanking police for that. So for somebody to take a stand like that against all military and treat them like, you know, and everybody that says, that, look, I do not say the Pledge of Allegiance. Amen. I, we do not say that in the church house. We do not. Amen. I don't think you're, I don't think you're an idolater or a wicked, you know, heathen because you do. I don't agree with it, but I don't go to the right. point of saying, you know, everybody, you put everybody in this box online. There's like this, you put everybody in this box and it's like, after you do it, there's like nothing they can do to get out of that box. They're just right. stuck there and everybody's all alike. And when you have conversations with people, you find out very quickly, that's not the case. That's not exactly. true. Not everybody who celebrates Halloween is actively pursuant, pursuing the devil. Yep. Yeah. Amen. You know, and that's one thing that you need to understand. Yeah, it's even like the conversations I have about repentance, you know, and um, there are people that some people would think are obviously diametrically opposed to our position, our biblical position on repentance. Um, but when I take the time to talk to them and I will even start the conversation by, listen, when I start to explain this to you, you're going to initially resist it. And you're going to think that it's this, but if you allow me to explain it from scripture yep. and I honestly believe if you're being honest, you're going to agree with me. And they do. Yeah. And, and they do. And you don't have to go after them and slice their face off. And no, and I've had people, I, the gospel. I've seen that too before online where somebody accused me of a position on repentance. That was absolutely nothing like I taught. And I remember David Ickes saying, well, he doesn't believe that he believes exactly what you said over here. So, right. and that guy said, oh, well, I thought he believed that. Well, you thought, but you don't know. And you just right. used him as something that he believes the same thing you do. Yeah. You know? Oh, and, and it, hey, it, it comes down to this current events, you know, with all this racial schisms with Indians and all this stuff, you know, immediately, mm -hmm. oh, you're the white man and all this. It's, it's all the same thing. It's, it's divide and conquer. Mm -hmm. And they want to, they want to split us all up and put us in little boxes and, you know, manipulate yep. us. Exactly. So what we want to do with this teaching is we're going to show you what Halloween is. Now, this is not exhaustive. This is from a track that we wrote, okay, that our church wrote. Um, so it's not exhaustive by any means. We're not trying to be exhaustive with it, okay? Right. Um, we, I have teachings out there. There's one called, there's a sermon called Halloween or Hallowed Be Thy Name. That'll give you a lot more in-depth information and it'll deal with a lot more of those things. That's not the purpose of this. The purpose of this is just to introduce you to this to say, okay, this is the way it is. Okay. Uh, this is what it is. This is what it's been used for. Okay. And this is how you handle it. 
Right. Practical approach, practical application. Exactly. Real, real world, real scenario stuff. That's just it right now. We want, that's what we want to do. We want to help you right where you're at, you know, right in the situation that you're in and hopefully teach you some, some good, strong biblical lessons. The Bible says that all scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness that the man of God may be perfect, truly furnished into all good works. So that's what we want to do. We want to help you with that. So we're going to get started here. Um, and, you know, we'll start with this. Anton LaVey had this comment. He said, after one's own birthday, the two major satanic holidays are Walper Giznacht, that's May 1st, and Halloween. That's what he said, Anton LaVey in his satanic Bible. Yes, you read that right. Halloween is one of the most important days in the lives of Satanists, witches, and other members of occult groups around the world. You might ask yourself, why this day of seemingly harmless fun, costumes, candy, and ghost stories would be so revered by these groups? To answer this question, we must look at its origins. Halloween has its origins in the Festival of Samhain, practiced among the Druids of ancient Britain and Ireland. Samhain and its ceremonies long precede Christianity. The night of, its, of this festival is believed to be the night during the year in which ghosts and witches were most likely to wander about. Souls of the dead were believed to return to visit their homes, and those who had died during the year were believed to journey to the other world. In other words, on this day, the Druids, like modern-day occultists and Wiccans, believed the veil between our world and the spirit world, as it is its thinnest, because of this, it was believed that this period was also favorable for divination, telling the future by means of spirits, on important matters and obtaining more occult power. This is why Halloween is so important to Satanists and witches, and they believe it is to their benefit when the masses participate in it as well. Now, I'm going to stop there. Brother Jim's going to read the next part of this, but let me just say this to you. That's from Britannica, the Encyclopedia Britannica on Hollywood, okay? Uh, excuse me, on Halloween, uh, Hollywood. That's another <laughs> Hollywood, story. Halloween. <laughs> Sorry, it's all the same. Uh, but, Satan is witches. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Lions and tigers and bears, oh my. But, uh, um, but anyway, basically, this is, this is not a Christian publication. This is just Britannica telling you the truth of the history of it. Now, we could go in depth and get into the gory things and all that kind of stuff, and we're not looking to do that today, okay? We don't need to do that. That's not important. Amen. You know. You know, what's important is, is that you understand how to deal with it. So that's, so, you know, that's the beginning of it here to understand. First of all, Anton LaVey understands full well that he said the same thing about television. He's right. like, you know, I never let my kids watch television. What are you insane? Yeah. I don't want them programmed. That's right. You know, yeah. he wanted to program his way, you know? Right, right. <laughs> um, but anyway, so, uh, so get that understanding there. That's the first part of it. Um, and, you know, that's a little bit of the history. You go on and, and go ahead and keep reading, Brother sure, Jim. Brother. Nearly all the traditions observed on Halloween have their roots in this pagan festival. For example, the Druids would wear masks and other disguises to avoid being recognized by the spirits they believed were present, which is likely the origin of dressing up in gruesome costumes. By partaking in Halloween, you are literally learning and doing the way of the heathen. God's word warns, thus saith the Lord, learn not the way of the heathen, Jeremiah 10, 2. Let me stop you there just for a second. And, uh, you know, the Bible tells us very clearly that we're not to follow after heathen practices. Uh, yeah. We're to be careful about those, especially those that are dealt with in their worship. You know, um, in Jeremiah, uh, that 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 chapter is speaking of holiday talking about well, it's talking about trees dragging a tree from the forest right. and uh you know decking it with silver and gold and that's and another radio show <laughs> that's another one that's another one yeah, but, yeah. Uh, and we've talked about that extensively before yeah. too as well yeah. um but anyway so that's that, that's that's an admonition that's a warning so this is so if you're taking notes here's the first thing i want you to think or the second thing i want you to think about first you understand the history of it second now the biblical principle which supersedes even the history of it the biblical principle that we would be breaking if we celebrated halloween is what learning the way of the heathen yeah, amen 
and okay. practicing it. Yeah. Yeah. And practicing the way learning it and practicing it. Yeah. Okay. So you go ahead and keep going, brother. He gives this warning because the way of the heathen always has been and always will be an abomination in the sight of the Lord. Thou shalt not learn to do after the abominations of those nations. There shall not be found any, there shall not be found among you any that useth divination or an observer of times or an enchanter or a witch or a charmer or a consulter with familiar spirits or a necromancer for all that do these things are an abomination unto the Lord. Deuteronomy 18, nine through 12. Now let's, let's talk about that for a second because uh, we'll give you like a modern definition of these Uh, brother Jim. What's the modern definition of divination? Uh, that's fortune telling or someone that attempts to tell the future. Exactly. Fortune telling. So that's, that's, that's what you, now what's, what's an observer of times? That would be an astrologer or somebody that studies the stars. stars. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. To look at the future. Right. Um, what's an enchanter? That would be a witch that casts spells on people. That's right. Or a charmer, which is a supernatural influence. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Or a consulter with familiar spirits. A consult. What will what will be familiar spirits in Halloween? What will we call those? Yeah, ghouls and ghosts. Exactly. Yeah. Or a necromancer. What's a necromancer? Uh, somebody that talks to the dead. That's right. That's yeah. right. They call up the dead. They speak to the dead. Right. And God strictly forbids that. So the second principle. Okay. Uh, that we see here that's very important is not to learn after the abominations of those nations. Those things that God hated, God doesn't want us to follow those things. Yeah, amen. He doesn't want us to be involved with those or to mimic those. Right. We amen. should not model ourselves, pattern ourselves after these things. These are things that are uh, an abomination to the Lord. And we do not want to participate in anything that is an abomination to the Lord. Amen. These are specifically called abominations. Okay. Amen. Yeah. You know, as a Christian, the ultimate aim of man or of any Christian should be to glorify God. Amen. And this is literally the inverse of that. This is the exact opposite of that. This is glorifying or even maybe not glorifying but just um looking at literally satanic elements in a light-hearted manner i mean that's how the sods have taken over you know they started yep. out that was the funny little sod guy on tv and now they're running the show so, isn't that how satan operates is it not a little one yeah exactly Amen. you know that's and then brother jim what's the third principle we see here we had the second one now there's a third one you're about to talk about Halloween glorifies everything that God abhors and calls evil. He wants us to have nothing to do with these. Uh, 1 Thessalonians 5.22 tells us, abstain from all appearance of evil. So it's not even just the evil. It's the appearance of evil. Now listen, let me help you with something. I know when you go out there and you dress up like a ghost and your kid dresses up like a pumpkin head or, 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 or a Ninja turtle or something like that. I understand you are not attempting to glorify Satan. I know that you're not committing blood sacrifices and worshiping the devil purposely in your heart. You're not trying to summon that. Right. Right. We know you're not trying to summon devils. We know that you think you're playing and having fun. I understand what you think, but I also understand what God has commanded. And God said to abstain from all appearance of evil. So the third principle that you, that you break with that is that you are not abstaining from all appearance of evil. Amen. So you've broken three principles there to celebrate Halloween. Yeah. Amen. As a, as a Christian, you should never step over. You know, the Bible talks about if you break down the hedges, the serpent's going to come through yeah. and he's going to get you. That's right. right. And, you know, we definitely don't want that to happen to you. And we want you to be educated and understand that, you know what? You're not going to find a verse that says, thou shalt not partake in Halloween. Right. 
but you don't have to. If you have the biblical principles and the commands to abstain from all appearance of evil and to abstain from these things and not to even, not to even from the appearance of these things. Yeah. Amen. Nobody's saying that you're a witch. Right. But if you're given the appearance of a witch, if you're right. given the appearance of a ghoul, if you're given an appearance and you're making a mockery of that satanic world, right, like exactly. that, then you are breaking. You have broken three principles to do that. And you have to break those a, three principles. Why would a Christian do that, or why would a Christian want to do that? Right. Why? Why would they hold their testimony in uh, as such a light matter to do that? Even if you know everybody wants to joke around, and it's it's good to joke around and have a good time. But why would you? joke around with your testimony you know it's just like it's just like christians you know and we see and you see it all the time now you know it's like guys that they're goofing and they'll uh you know you even see it in some of these churches and skits where these guys would put dresses on oh i i, I saw on. that stuff yeah and it's the same exact thing like what are you doing man the whole push of society is androgyny and you're gonna you know this is how the sods have taken control and you're like playing into their scheme you know over and over again eight times we're told in the new testament to be sober yeah amen and we're told that because this is a war and that eight is the number right. of regeneration and this is a war amen you know so we need to understand that all right i'll continue on here uh because we we purpose don't want these to be too long this yeah, this show amen. we want it to be a blessing to you we want you to be able to listen to it and sit down even with your family listen to it amen. you know this is family friendly this is not going to go too far Halloween also glorifies death with all the skeletons, skulls, tombstones, and ghosts used as decorations, as well as costumes of zombies, vampires, skeletons, and the like. The Bible says about wisdom and about, about God that all they that hate me love death. All that hate God love death. Yeah. When someone has an interest or an appetite for these things, it's because deep down in, in their heart, there's a love for death. When someone loves death, it reveals that the real problem is hatred for God who inspired the scriptures. When someone glorifies and celebrates death and devils, they are calling evil good. There is a judgment pronounced upon those who do that. Woe unto them that call evil good and good evil, that put darkness for light and light for darkness, that put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. So that's the fourth principle right there. Fourth thing. That God says, he says, woe unto them that call evil good and good evil. You know, God pronounces a woe. That's a judgment on those yeah. that take lightly yeah. what he says, that take lightly his commands and say, you know what? It's not that big of a deal. Mm. You're calling it evil good when you participate in something that God expressly forbids you to avoid even the appearance of. Amen. So that's another principle that we have to take and say, you know what? I believe if I celebrate Halloween, I have to break that principle. Yeah, amen. And that's that's not good. You know, I have to I bring the judgment of God upon me. Now, if you're saved, no, God's not gonna take your salvation away. But as a son, he's gonna chasten you. Hebrews chapter 12. He's amen. gonna chasten you and he's gonna deal with you as with sons. Yeah. If he doesn't, the Bible says, then are you bastards and not sons? That's right. And his chastening is perfect. God right. knows how to discipline his children, and his children respond to his chastening. Absolutely, they do. Yeah. Halloween is about darkness and fear. If you name the name of Christ, the Bible says, For God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power, and of love, and of a sound mind. And as for darkness, the Bible says, What fellowship hath righteousness with unrighteousness? And what communion hath light with darkness? And what concord hath Christ with Belial? Wherefore, come out from among them, and be ye separate, saith the Lord God. Touch not the unclean thing. Listen, God didn't give us the spirit of fear, and we have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but we're to reprove them. Amen. Right? So, here's a fifth principle that we could say. All right? A fifth principle here that you have to break is having fellowship. The Bible, well, actually, it's a command, too, but, I mean, having fellowship— with unrighteousness. Yeah. Amen. Have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of what? Darkness. Yeah. But rather reprove them. Right. And this is why a uh, trunk or tree doesn't work. Exactly. This is so why we're going to get into that. We're going to yeah. ask that question. Is yeah. that a viable um, replacement? Right. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. 
No, no, that's okay. That's all. That's quite all right. It doesn't matter. I mean, hey, it's going to come on either way in the show. So uh, we want people to understand that. But you know, we can answer that now. Is it a viable? Is it a viable? Uh, well, does it break one of the principles? Right. Ask yourself that question. Does it break one of the principles? Well, it doesn't avoid all appearance of evil. Um, it still has fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness. See what I mean? You're, yeah, you're taking pagan practices and you're going to take those practices and try to Christianify them. You know, it's basically paganism. It's basically pure Catholicism. You know, that was the, that's the Catholicism concept is like, we're going to take all this, this paganism and we're going to Christianize it. So instead of dressing up like Frankenstein, you're going to dress up like um, Padre Pio or something. And it's still the same thing. And Padre Pio was the devil, just like uh, Dracula or whatever. But, but, you know, it's like you're going to dress up like a saint or you're going to dress up like an angel, you know, and, and you'll have a girl dressed up like an angel and girls aren't, you know, they're not even feminine. And all mm -mm. That stuff. Same thing. No, absolutely not. So what we see is that there's principles that are still going to be broken by doing that. Um, because of these things come at the wrath of God upon the children of disobedience, the Bible says. My messages come through and they ping really loud. I got a new Mac, so I haven't figured out how to how to shut that off yet. I got to do that. I don't know if you're hearing that come through or not, but but just uh, barely. Yeah. Okay. Can... Okay. So if you hear a ping on there uh, when you listen, sorry about that. Um, okay. The Bible says, "Be not ye therefore partakers with them, for you were sometimes darkness, but now are ye light in the Lord. Walk as children of the light." You know, in a, there's there's events that we've preached at before. And one is called the zombie pub crawl. And at the zombie pub crawl, they all walk around and act like zombies. Mm. And they glorify evil. And I have been there before, and there are people that would tell you that they are Christians there. Oh, I, we're just having fun. Yeah. Have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them right? Proving what is acceptable unto the Lord and have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness. Is Jesus Christ your Lord? Then stop walking in darkness. Amen. Then spake Jesus again unto them saying, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. Go ahead and pick that up right there, brother Jim. These commandments are not meant to take away our fun, but for our protection. God's word says, your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about, seeking whom he may devour. By partaking in activities so strongly associated with devils, witchcraft, and death, you are literally inviting devils and giving them a foothold into your life and take, taking down the walls of protection that God has given. Amen. You know, here's the thing you have to understand, okay? Um, the veil is very thin that day. It's a very satanic high day. The veil is very thin between the worlds. Um, you see in the month of October, you'll see a lot of demonic rise. Yeah. You know, wicked things. There's always an October surprise, right? Yeah. I wonder yeah. why that's October, right? Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> right? Satanist be Satanist. <laughs> right. That's exactly right. So they understand these things. And yeah. we know you don't understand this and you're not trying to call up devils. We understand that. That's not what we're saying. What we're saying is, is that you're having fellowship with them and you're inviting that particular behavior on. Um, the Bible says um, to consider the, the effects that this has on children as well. Uh, train up a child in the way he should go. And when he is old, he will not depart from it. Amen. There's another principle that, you know, that you need to pay attention to. That would be a sixth one, I guess you could say. It, right, and that, that speaks right to the whole trunk or treat thing. Like, are we supposed to teach our kids like, oh, wait a second, if we take this worldly thing and we just repackage it, you know, if we take this piece of um, poo and we shine it real good and maybe spray a coat of lacquer on it, and then spray some potpourri on it. I mean, it's still a it's still a piece of poo. A turd is a turd. Yep. I think somebody used to say you can't polish a turd. 
No, no, you cannot. And yeah. that would be trunk or treat. Would exactly. Be third. Yeah, exactly. And you know, um, I'm going to read one more verse about that. Then we're going to just get into that. Uh, cause I don't, you know, um, one of these things, the, the Bible says the end of all these things is this, but the fearful and unbelieving and the abominable and murders and whoremongers and sorcerers and idolaters and all liars shall have their part in the lake, which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. Mm. So those that lead children astray, the Bible says, and whosoever shall offend one of these little ones that believe in me, it is better for him that a millstone were hanged about his neck and he were cast into the sea. Mm. Mark yep. nine forty two. Right. So if you teach your children uh, these things, then you are violating another scripture principle. You're leading children astray. Yep. You're teaching them compromise in their life. If they go to church on Sunday, go to Sunday school and do all this, and then you haven't partaken in a Christianized version or something of Halloween, what you're doing is you're teaching them compromise. Yeah. But the Bible says, ye that love the Lord hate evil. Right? Amen. We're, we're, to, we're to hate evil and when we, when we love the Lord. So those are like six or seven principles there that the practice of Halloween violates. Now, the next thing that we ask is a good question, I believe. And that question is this, Brother Jim. How do I deal with Halloween? How do I deal with it as a Christian that has been practicing it for up teen years my children are at different stages and ages. And if I've been practicing it, how do I deal with it? What do I do to stop it? First of all, I have to be obedient to God. I have to determine right. that. I guess the number one thing we would say is obedience to God. Amen. I have to obey God. If everything that I just showed you was true and told you out there that it was true, then your response should be number one, to repent. And number two, to do right. Yeah, and, and honestly, if the Lord's revealed it to you, it's a great opportunity, actually, uh, one, to present the gospel, uh, two, to just give a testimony of what the Lord's doing in your life. And uh, I mean, and this tract is kind of like a perfect example. This is one way you could approach it, you know, is you could, you could review this tract with these verses in there and these different principles. And, uh, I mean, that would be, that would serve twofold, you know, one, it would, um, explain it to others and they in turn might be convicted by the Holy spirit and repent of it. Um, but two, it's just going to give you an opportunity to present the word of God. Amen. Amen. Absolutely. So, you know, when we're dealing with our own children with this and we have to sit down with them, we have to say, you know, children, um, we were wrong and yeah. we shouldn't partake in this evil. Um, we're to avoid the, the appearance of evil. Go through that and explain to our children, say, children, we're not going to be a part of that anymore. Um, now, that's pretty much how you deal with your children. Now, you're going to have a varied responses. If your children are not saved and you have not taught them to follow the word of God in their lives and the, and the word of God is their rule of faith and practice, it's the way we live. If you've not taught them that obedience to the Lord, then, you know, you've got your work cut out for you. You, you have to always talk to your children, make sure there's no bitterness in their heart towards these things that you institute. A lot of times what happens is a father will come in and be like, oh, it's all wicked. You're all, it's all wicked and you, you can't partake in this evil. And they start burning the movies and yeah. they march them out there and they, they just, I'm not saying it's wrong to burn the movies or anything like that because we did ours we shot all ours out. but you know what you got to explain it to your children too you got to teach them and you got to find out what's in that heart of theirs amen Make sure their right. heart is not holding on to bitterness because these things have been let go of because they had to walk away from these things because your children are going to have to obey their parents right and if you don't explain it to them this is how we do it and uh there is no what it was what did i always hear what was it uh one of the let's see what did he say uh there is no try, it's do or die or something. You know yeah. what I mean? <laughs> These guys that want to rule with an iron fist, uh, you know, that you know, I don't have to explain why, you just do it, you know, and that that's foolish because that's gonna make your kids bitter. You're not supposed to Well, it doesn't teach them anything either. Right, exactly. You know, I mean, yes, there's, there's no a training. time 
there's a time when children in emergencies they, where children just need to obey right. and you'll explain it to them later yeah. yep. but there should be that explanation amen because we're teaching them to critically think and discern things amen logic and reason exactly if you're not if we're not teaching them that amen. then we're teaching what are we going to teach a bunch of blind numb dum-dums that just do what they're told because authority says so not because there's any basis for it there is very little logic and reason left in society and, and that's that, because it's not taught that is exactly right the parents have failed you know they have they've allowed the babysitter and the television and the daycare and the public school propaganda machine they've allowed all those satanic systems to program their child and all of those systems are void of logic and reason, period. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Absolutely. So what we want to do is we want to sit there and explain it to our children and say, listen, this is why. Okay, let me show you why. Let me show you why this dishonors God and our life is to honor the Lord. Yeah. Now, the Amen. first person you're going to have to get on board with the family with this besides yourself as dad is mom. Yeah. Mom's got to understand this. So you don't need to take out the Baptist bazooka and blow mom's head off with it. But right. you sit down and say, mom, honey, this is what we need to talk about. And you sit down and you show her plainly from the scriptures, what the Bible says. And the, John chapter 10 says that, that God's children will hear his voice. And when he teaches, when you show them the word of God, I'm not talking about your voice. I'm talking about you showing them the Bible. This is God's voice. The word of God is God's voice right here. Yeah. And his sheep know him, and they follow him, and he gives unto them eternal life. And they'll know his voice. Yeah. Uh, and I believe that on issues like this especially, that you know, if you get the word of God in there, you go through these principles we showed you here from the word of God, I believe they'll listen. Yeah, amen. And another thing is, too, is if you want to teach this to your wife and teach this to your family, you better – you better have your act together. Yes. You know, I, I've talked to a lot of guys, you know, oh. and they want to scream at their wife and call her a Jezebel while they're farming her out. You know, they got her out bringing home the bacon mm -hmm. and they want to scream at her and we're not doing Christmas and all this stuff. And here they're surfing porn at night. They're mm -hmm. not eat one. They're not bringing home the bacon. They're not providing right. for their family. They're worse than an infidel. And then they want to scream at their wife about how they're not going to do Halloween and that's Satan's holiday. Well, guess what, buddy? Like you better get, you better take an account. You better consider your ways. You better have your act. Nobody's saying you have to be sinlessly perfect to teach your family, but you better not just be an openly hypocritical person. You yeah. Quit I mean? living like a devil on your own and getting yeah. caught with pornography. I've had, I've had these people call me and they took all the teachings that I ever taught on against sin and things like that and they use them against their wife and they come to find out they're not even sleeping with their own wife they're they're watching pornography they're doing all these other things it's a cloak yeah and the, yeah it's a cloak yeah. that cannot cover and you know it's it's funny because then what happens is you know the message gets rejected and i and right people turn me into some kind of animal or mean guy they don't want to listen to me and i'm like what did i do all i did was bring the truth to you yeah. but you know it's but but there's a good reason for that it's because you know what if you don't do right your family's going to reject that message that is right okay yeah. so live 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 right okay don't be telling your wife about taking the kids trick or treating when you're not even providing sitting on the couch being lazy watching porn or something like that yeah. living like a devil not living up to your obligations and being a father to your children and then you find a hobby horse to jump on so you want to jump on halloween that's and right eat your wife over the head with it don't do that that's not yeah. that's 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 not that um, won't end well truth no, and yeah. it won't go well and it won't be received yeah. okay so uh, i i say that in love to you please don't do that please yeah. Please live for God. Please don't be a phony like that. And then, and then get, you know, your wife all messed up and everything with that. And, and, and just come down on the kids so hard that the only time yeah. you ever spend with them is when you're railing on them. Right. Exactly. Something like that instead of being a yeah. father to them. Okay. Amen. So that's important. Next, we'll talk about how do we deal with the grandparents and others? Well, listen, you got to deal with love. Yeah. Okay. Remember, love is our aim. 
when you see my sermons and you see me preach up there, I am preaching from the pulpit with the authority of the word of God to preach and to stand before the people of God, to lift up my voice like a trumpet and to do this. When you see me on the street corner, it's to cry aloud, spare not. When I deal with people one-on-one, I'm not sitting there in a room with them screaming at them. Amen. Amen. I don't sit with my wife and yell at my wife. Okay. I don't sit with my children and yell at them unless they're, you know, going to get hurt or, you know, whatever. But I mean, you know, that's the normal practice of explaining something to my family is not to scream at them. Okay. It's not to get on the bully pulpit and do that. It's not, there's different approaches. When I'm dealing with grandma and grandpa, the first thing I'm not going to say, look, you're a bunch of devil worshipers. You're not getting around my kids. You're not giving them any of that wicked candy. You wicked devils stop dressing like Dracula and you look like a Jezebel whore. No, that's not how we deal with things. Okay. That's true. I you, you it's funny, but you know, we already know true. that we've seen it before. Yes. Yeah. It's you know, accurate. so you know what your grandparents aren't participating in Halloween because they want to corrupt your children and turn them into devils. At least I don't think so. Anyway, um, the average grandma and grandpa just want like to see their kids, their grandkids dress up and look cute yeah. and they want to give them candy and spoil them rotten. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And we have the in-laws, we have the in-laws in right now, you know, and they do all that stuff and they do Christmas and all that stuff. And, but they know where we stand with it. Mm-hmm. And, you know, we just kindly explained it and they are, they placate us. Um, sure. They, they do attempt to resist it indirectly, you know, just because, you know, for one, okay, your grandparents, they're older people, right? They've lived their life. Mm-hmm. They've done everything. Most of them, that previous generation was one of the last relatively legit generations. They actually provided, uh, usually the wife stayed at home. So they put their money where their mouth was and they walked the walk and they talked the talk. Obviously they weren't perfect. You know, we're not even necessarily but saying they had character, that. right? They had, they were character. So, you know, so now you can't, punch him in the face with the Bible. You know what I mean? It's just, no, you gotta, you, what you do when you deal with them, uh, you sit down with grandma, grandma, say grandma, grandpa, we're not going to celebrate Halloween anymore. You show them why. Right. And, and explain to them, I know grandpa and grandma, you're not devil worshipers. I understand that. And I understand your motives behind that. I get that, but we know it doesn't honor God. And we ask you to respect our wishes about that. And, you know, not to, promote that with our children and you know if you know you can buy the kids something anytime you want to yeah exactly you know, yeah uh, but when it gives you a great them. opportunity to present the gospel Amen. look you know uh the lord saved us and we want to honor and glorify him with our life and that is really the main reason why we don't do it um historically let's take the historical background out of it you know, it's our conviction that it doesn't honor and glorify God. Um, you know, dressing up like a dead person, logically, right, doesn't honor and glorify God. And, uh, you know, that's why we don't want to do it. And mm-hmm. you, you can respect that, can't you? And they always say, yeah. No, no unrational person is going to say, no. You know, I like my Frankenstein costumes. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's, they're, they're going to, if you're reasonable, they're going to be reasonable. Yeah, and I mean, just try to, you know, um, there's going to be various degrees of people's responses to it, but with grandparents, with close family, you know, the last thing you, you don't need to make them feel like they're Satan incarnate because they're doing right. that. Convict them over the gospel. Yes. Of them yes. being a sinner, but the least of their problems is Halloween. Exactly. Amen. All right. Their biggest problem is they're a lost sinner deserving hell and they need to repent and believe the gospel. So you know, if you get up there and start screaming and hollering at them and how wicked they are, they don't know what sow wind is. They don't know what any of that stuff is. All they know is they, you grew up doing it when you were a kid and you turned out fine. Yeah, That's what they know. But you know what? That's no reason for us to do anything wrong because something worked out. And by the grace of God, we didn't turn into yeah. a psychopath. Yeah. But, you know, uh, so dealing with grandparents like that, deal with them kindly explain to them their your wishes and the direction and you know what you don't got to get you don't got to get into all the gory details of halloween right. 
Okay. Yeah. Just keep it simple, you know, and that's the best way for it. And honestly, the people that want to do that and saw when, and back in 1363, this witch slit the throat of all this stuff. I mean, right. most of the time that's just know it all stuff. Like you don't, you don't need to it's know. Dramatics. All. It's, yeah, to get and the, it's dramatic. It's, yeah. you know, it's to get the online following and the presence and, all those other things and to show people how much knowledge you have about it and everything else. Yeah. You know, we already know what the Bible says about the dead. It says you were dead in trespasses and sins. Well, why would I want to mimic? Right. Amen. I'm not dead anymore. I'm alive forevermore. Amen. Amen. Uh, By the grace of God. So, you know, um, let's just remember those principles. Okay. You don't need to, Go through all those other things. Now, uh, how do I deal with friends and people that are around me, coworkers, neighbors, all these other people? Well, be educated about it in the sense of have a biblical, this is perfect. You can hand them this and say, and give exactly. them this. Exactly. Amen. You know, um, yep. give, them, give them this tract. Uh, I'll put the PDF of this tract on Sermon Audio. Amen. Yeah. So we'll yeah. upload it so you can have it. Give them this tract and say, you know, this is why we don't, okay? Right. I'm just asking that you respect our wishes on this. I know you're not devil worshipers or anything like that, but you know what? The truth is, is that it doesn't honor God, and, you know, that's our stand on it, and that's where we yeah. stand. And it gives the gospel. Amen. You know, the, the tract gives the gospel as well, and the law and the gospel to bring men to repentance and to show them their need. So, I mean, when you're dealing with family, explain it like that in friends. Don't explain it in a really kooky way to where, you know, yeah. and then and then they slit the throat of this, and then this happened, and then that happened, and then this happened, and that's why this is the head that stuck out. And I, look, exactly. all right, these people are going to look at you like you're nuts. Yes. You know, you don't need to do that to explain. Unless you're nuts. Unless you're nuts, right. Then you, might a, have to. <laughs> you might have to. I've seen some of those. I've met some of those. Uh, <laughs> But you don't have to do that, okay? You don't have to get that deep into it. You know, you can explain that without, you know, without doing that. Now, what do I think about trunk or treat? We've already kind of covered that. Yeah. Um, no, it's not a, it's not a vibe. You don't turn the church house into the same thing and open up trunks in the, in the church parking lot and have all the kids do that because it's safer. It's not about being safe. It's about being right with God. Amen. It's about avoiding all appearance of evil. Uh, yeah. not replacing Halloween. I've heard people, well, let's have a harvest party and we'll yeah. all dress up like this. No, we don't need to do that. Why? No. We don't need to replace that. Teach your children that there's right and there's wrong. Good night. This is America, folks. We are so spoiled rotten. We don't yes. need a day to have yeah. candy. We don't need a day to do this. We don't need a day. We, we yeah. are blessed beyond measure. Our children are not going to be any any less socialized or, or any are traumatized by not celebrating Halloween. Amen. All right, they're not. They don't need it. Yeah. They got enough stuff. They get enough. They live in a wonderful land, and they want to honor. And you teach them to honor God with their lives. Amen. That's I right. don't need a replacement for that. No. Uh. Uh-uh. You know, for an evil day, I need to have no fellowship with the unfruitful works, but rather reprove them. Amen. Mimicking them or trying to Christianize them is not reproving them. And honestly, if you're in a fellowship and everybody loves each other and you're fellowshipping and spending time with one another and breaking bread with one another, you know, you don't need some stupid excuse for some trunk or treat thing to fellowship. Oh my goodness, no. You can get together and... Every Sunday we get together all day. We're here all day and we spend the whole day together. Amen. Yeah, amen. And that's how, and that's how it is. And the work that, you, that, that, that the Lord is doing down there, that's what you do. You spend all day together, don't you? Right. you spend, yeah. Why? Because it's the Lord's day. You spend it together, that's fellowship. Right. It's not, you don't got to pull teeth to get somebody to do that. No, amen. You know, they want to do that. They want to serve the Lord. They want right. to do that work. They yeah. want to be together. And you, you don't need a reason for that. People no. that need a reason for those programs, it's because there's no heart. Yeah, it's because they don't want to come and you need to entice them. They exactly. They need a, a gimmick. It's a right. gimmick. Goats need entertained. Yeah. Sheep are fed. Yeah. Amen. You know, so uh, we don't, we don't need to do that. Follow those things. Um, you know, I'm just trying to think if there's anything, any other aspect of this that, you know, we haven't really covered. I, I think that's pretty much it though. I everything. Mean, yeah. yeah, I really think so. I mean, it's very simple. Um, you know, don't make an excuse for it. And, 
you know, how to, oh, maybe at work, maybe they have a Halloween party at work. Right. Okay. Some work, work has that, you know, how do I deal with that? Well, I mean, if it's mandatory that you have to go to work, you don't, I wouldn't dress up for anything and I wouldn't glorify sure. anything and I wouldn't put any costumes on and I wouldn't yeah. do that. I would just tell people, you know what? It's against what I believe in the Bible. Give them this, give your boss this. Yeah. Amen. Why not? Yeah. Just tell them this is where I stand on it. I'll come because I'm an employee and you asked me to, um, if it's mandatory and I have to, but I'm not going to celebrate anything. I'm not going to dress up. I'm not going to act like that. You know, uh, I don't know if bosses make people do that. I, 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 not you know, anymore. They don't make people do anything. <laughs> yeah. I, I don't know. So I'm just, I was just speculating cause I, I'm not yeah. sure anymore how that works, but, um, cause I haven't had to deal with that, but, um, the you Muslims know? have fixed all that stuff. Like, yeah, the Muslims don't have to do that, right? <laughs> they don't have to do anything. So no, they're you know. spooky enough. So their yeah. costumes are really spooky. <laughs> yeah. But I mean, you know, just so dealing with those things, if you're in a church that's practicing and celebrating Halloween, yeah, I wouldn't go when they're doing that. I mean, I probably wouldn't go to that church to be honest with you. Um, you know, if, if they, you know, if you can't sit down and reason with them and say, you know, Halloween is of the devil. I mean, this is pretty obvious. Well, that's not why we're doing it. I understand we already covered that objection. We know you're not doing it because you want to worship the devil, but you're also disobeying scripture by not avoiding right. all appearance of evil. Right. You, there's seven principles you have to, you have to ignore. And to violate. Halloween yeah. and violate. Yeah. To practice Halloween. So I hope this helps you a little bit here. This isn't meant to be long. Um, I hope it helps you. I hope it helps you understand the issue. And uh, it better helps you how to deal with Halloween. How do I deal with it? And, you know, the truth about it and how do I deal with it? And, uh, you know, let me finish it by saying this. If you've listened all the way through this and you're here listening and you're not saved. Well, you know what? Your biggest problem is not that you dress up like a ghost. Your biggest problem is that you're lost. Mm, And you're on your way to hell. And you deserve to go to hell. And the Bible says that except you repent, you shall all likewise perish. The Bible says, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And for the wages of sin is death. So for your sin, you deserve to die. You deserve to go to hell for all of eternity. You've broken God's law. If you've offended one, one thing in God's righteous law, you're guilty of it all. Yeah, amen. And the Bible says that the law is to be preached that every mouth may be stopped and that all the world may become guilty before God. Guilty, dead in trespasses and sins. You're like those zombies. You're dead. You're walking right. zombies. Yeah. Dead in trespasses and sins. But Jesus died on the cross for your sins. He was born of a virgin, lived a perfect sinless life, and then died on the cross for your sins. And he was buried and he rose again the third day. And if you repent and believe the gospel of Jesus Christ. If you turn from your sin and believe the gospel of Jesus Christ, the Bible says that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Amen. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. You can, by the grace of God, turn from your sin and believe the gospel today and be saved. And then you'll have, you'll be a new person. Old things will be passed away and all things will become new. That's your greatest yeah. need. Yeah, that's and right. uh, that's the need of the hour. So we pray that you'll get saved. We pray you'll turn to Christ and call out to him for salvation and he'll change you and make you a new creature. And that's, that's really why we're here. That's why we do what we do. Amen. So you can know the truth and the truth shall make you free. The Bible says. All right, Brother Jim, I think that's it. Do you have anything to add at all? No, it was good, brother. All right. All right. Brother Jim, this is Pastor Cooley with OPBC Online, a ministry of Old Paz Baptist Church in Northfield, Minnesota. See?